is LSD. Peyote. DMT. STP. Mescaline. Psilocybin. Hashish. And marijuana. That's right. Marijuana is also a psychedelic drug. Because LSD is so much more potent than the others, about 300 times as potent as marijuana, about 50 times as potent as STP, about 130 times as potent as mescaline. And because so little is known about LSD, let's talk about it first. This is the head of a pin, magnified 100 times. What you see now is 200 micrograms of LSD. That's the full dose to send a normal adult on an 8 to 12 hour trip. More than enough to do the same for two to four teenagers. There are some people who can have an LSD experience with only 25 to 35 micrograms. And we can barely see that with the naked eye. This aspirin tablet, it weighs five grams. Now were it to be made only of LSD, there would be enough LSD for 165,000 people to take a real mind-bending trip. This much LSD would kill 20 people. The lethal dose is 15,000 micrograms. Now that's one millionth of an ounce. That's about what a particle of dust weighs. Hi, I'm Tommy Rowe. By now, it must be obvious to you, as it is to me, that LSD is very powerful stuff. And that's just what it is, stuff. It's not good, it's not bad, it's only a chemical, a drug. It's been around for about 20 years, and people have been trying it for about the last five or six years. There's some people who think that LSD is the greatest gift to mankind since Tutti Frutti ice cream. But there are many others who feel that LSD is bad news to the individual and to the world he lives in. For us to make our decisions, we'll have to listen and understand both sides before we make up our minds. While it would be very difficult to find people to tell you how good for you heroin is, or speed, or barbiturates, it's very easy to find people who just can't wait to tell you how great LSD, peyote, DMT, SDP, mescaline, and of course marijuana is. I don't really dig dropping pills, but you get the wildest highs on acid. But the only way, I think, the only time I think I've been able to understand myself was on an acid trip. Then things were really clear. Now, I've taken LSD 42 times, and it hasn't done me any harm. Why knock it? Some of our country's greatest minds drop acid. They couldn't all be dummies. But everyone says when you drop some acid, the whole world becomes clear to you, like an open book. What if you... You thought of it as a great adventure, a great experience, and you had someone with you for the whole trip. I don't believe all that dumb stuff about chromosome damage. We would have seen all them deformed babies by now anyway. That's basically what one side has to say in favor of LSD. Now let's hear what the other side has to say. Then we'll be able to make up our own minds. Let's hear from young people who have had their reasons for being down on LSD. Let's also hear from doctors, psychologists, and other experts who have tried LSD themselves. We've had a great deal of experience with LSD and the people who have taken it. But the only way, the only time I think I've ever been able to understand myself was on an acid trip. Then things were really clear. As a psychologist, I have to tell you that the understanding you think you have gained just doesn't fit in with the facts. Here are the facts. You've been on a number of trips and we're both agreed that you're having even more problems with your school, your parents, and even your friends. Perhaps what you think or feel on a trip just doesn't fit in with the straight world which you must return to and must learn to live in. As far as understanding yourself is concerned, the only real understanding you could gain would come from having a bummer and then analyzing it, which would mean you'd have to want to try to have bummers and then attempt to understand them the way that psychologists analyze dreams. 
which unless you are properly trained, you cannot do by yourself. I don't really dig dropping pills, but you get the wildest trip on acid. Yeah, but you can also get the wildest bummers. And you can never really be sure which it's going to be. But what do you mean? Nobody ever knows enough about the quality of the acid itself. Or their own hidden hang-ups that would make it to be a real trip. Or a real bummer. Yeah, but you've dropped acid. My third trip was a real bummer. Enough to make me not to want to go on a fourth. What if you were really cool when you did it? The setting's just right. You're not uptight or paranoid about getting busted. <laughs> What if, what if you think of it as a great adventure, a great experience, and you have someone with you through the whole trip, someone straight who hasn't had any acid? Well, it could be a great experience and a great adventure if, if you're really in the right frame of mind, if you're sure about the dose in the cab, if you could be absolutely certain there wouldn't be chromosome damage, if you won't feel guilty about what your parents would think. And if you're sure, you couldn't get busted because it is against the law. But how can you be sure that for the eight to 16 hours the trip will take, that your straight friend, your babysitter, will be reliable, will stay with you and be able to handle any problems you might get into and not have a contact trip recurrence of his own, just from watching you on yours. Lots of luck. Why knock it? Some of our country's greatest minds drop after. They couldn't all be dummies. Who, for example? Who's one of these great minds? Um, uh... You don't understand. I keep explaining it, but you don't understand. LSD, or mescaline even, if you just let it happen, wow, you find you can really love your fellow man. Even when you come down, you can really love your fellow man. No, I don't agree with you. I mean, what kind of a person are you if you can only love your fellow man if you've taken drugs? But LSD and mescaline open your mind, your feelings. They make you feel you can just about love everybody. But I always hear that, Lori. I mean, I think kids that take a lot of acid must have some really big hang-ups. How can they be capable of loving anyone? Gee, Lori, it's easy to say you love everybody, but it's very hard to find just one person to love. Who says you can't love one person when you're on acid? What is there to stop you? I say you can't. I mean, it takes over 10 hours for an LSD trip, right? Right. So the kids that are involved in LSD don't have time for anything but themselves. They don't have time for anybody, whether it be just one person or everyone in their lives. You guys are just not with it. You belong back in the dark ages with the cavemen. How do you expect to get on in this world if you don't keep up with what's going on? I know what's wrong with the whole world. But everyone says when you drop some acid, the whole world becomes clear to you, like an open book. I've got news for you. It would take more than LSD for me to understand what's wrong with the whole world, or even our local politics. Honey, you may think that you know things when you're up, but you can't really know any more than you already knew before you took the LSD. You may have feelings with LSD about what you know, feelings you've never felt before but you could never know what you haven't learned yet. Evelyn, I've been trying to tell you something, but you never give me a chance. I'm listening. Why don't you tell me what you're going to say? I've been thinking. We should try some acid. I hear it's a real cool trip. Sure, sure, and so is cocaine. But where are we going to find that kind of money? Besides, if anyone finds out, we'll be in a lot of trouble. Man, like cocaine is a hard drug. I'm talking about acid, dummy. LSD, not cocaine. Don't tell me about acid. I know too many kids around here that they tell me that they've been on bad trips on LSD. They saw rats, roaches in different sizes, shapes, and colors. It was like a nightmare. That stuff ain't for me. No way. But Mrs. Andrade, isn't it true that everybody's being uptight about those freaky chromosomes? Isn't it true that most scientists don't agree on chromosome breakage? Besides, does it matter as long as I don't drop any acid while I'm pregnant? <laughs> if LSD won't kill my chromosomes, the pollution in the air and water will. So what's the difference? The difference is we're talking about two different things. We know that if we don't take LSD, we won't damage your chromosomes. 
All scientists know that it's too soon to know exactly what the damage will be, especially to your children and your children's children. But water and air pollution are killing us anyway. Well, that could be. But I don't agree that we should just sit back, swallow some acid, and say, well, man, pollution's going to kill us anyway. This time, the whole country is worried about pollution, and things are being done about it all the time. How much are we doing about it if all we do is complain and swallow a drug? Not much better than bad people doing bad things about our water and air. This world's in bad shape, but it's the world that your generation is going to have to run in the next 10 to 30 years. So what kind of preparation is LSD, STP, DMT, peyote, mescaline, or marijuana for what you're going to have to do to straighten it out? Oh, come on. Mescaline is a natural drug. What could be wrong with something this natural? It's made out of cactus buttons or mushrooms, or is that peyote? Well, however it's made, it's natural. And you don't get chromosome damage from something that's natural. Maybe you don't get chromosome damage from mescaline. But are you sure there aren't any other kinds of damages, like from a mental hang-up? Oh, Paula, it never hurt the Indians, and they used it for thousands of years in their religious ceremonies. Sure, I know, but for how many ceremonies a year? How many times a week? And were their minds and bodies fully developed? Or were they still kids, teenagers? And do you know whether they would wander all over the place where they could get hurt, or just sit there safe and stoned in their teepees? And I'm sure they didn't have to cross 42nd Street and Broadway, or Sunset and Vine when they were stoned. Well, of course not. You know they led very simple lives. That's the point. It's much easier for one of us to develop a hang-up on a drug like mescaline. But it can become a crutch. There are too many people who just can't hack living in our very big and mixed-up life. You know, a drug doesn't have to do damage to your chromosomes to do damage to you. Oh, that's an old argument. Do you need a new one? Well, you've seen two sides of the LSD psychedelic question. But if you really think of it, there have been about 20 sides to the question. And we've had a chance to hear that many people speak their minds. While it's possible that some things were left out, we did hear from the most important and most strongly felt opinions about LSD. Now it's your turn. Now you have to decide based on what you have learned and what you already knew. One. Is it worth the risk to your mind and body to drop acid for kicks or knowledge about yourself and the world you live in? Two, are you sure you're the kind of person who will not get hung up on acid or won't go into other drugs? And three, can any of your personal problems be solved by LSD? And last and not least, will your dropping acid or other drugs do anything for anyone else in the world? Will it do anything for all those people LSD is supposed to make you love? your fellow man, you decide. Mm -hmm.